This is your host, Tyson Banigan, The Illuminator, your number one health, wealth, and enlightenment activator. Need some help? Give me a call toll free, 1-866-369-7464. So welcome to the healing hour for August the 13th, 2019. And this is Tyson Banigan, The Energy Detective, here to answer your questions on dowsing and energy healing. And today, for whatever reasons, I've been locked out of Facebook yet again for whatever they think that somebody is misusing my Facebook account. So yet again, it seems to be a sort of a regular, uh, every other day I'm getting kicked out and have to go through submitting my driver's license and all the rest. Anyway, so uh, we're going to continue on. So we're hoping that people can find us, that we're on Zoom, or they can phone in toll free one 866 369 seven four six four and answer any questions that they may have around dowsing or energy healing or have a clearing today i really wanted to talk about a number of things is uh, i've been working with some clients um, and discovered uh, through this book and i'm just going to hold it up here this is uh, your multiple souls and this is by ruth rendelli r-a-r-e-n-d-e-l-y your multiple souls. I found it really interesting because um, it talks about how your multiple souls direct your creativity, genius, complexity, and moods. And um, for a long time, uh, it was difficult for her because many people didn't, there's a picture of her, many people didn't believe that what she was saying was correct, that people could have multiple souls. And um, it's becoming more evident that they can and of course, they, like any multiple cells, or uh, they can be both positive and negative. So it, if there's multiple cells, it's not something that you need to necessarily freak out about, but it is good to know whether they are all on the same page. I know I've had reoccurring dreams at times where it said like I'm in the back of the car trying to drive the car. I've got the, uh, the steering wheel, but I can't reach the pedals because somebody else has the control of the pedals. And that's the feeling of multiple souls that somebody, sometimes somebody's in your driver's seat and uh, taking over from the consciousness that's dominant at the moment. And so it's sort of like maybe that's the switching of the souls at that time where one is partly in the driver's seat and one's still backseat driving and has control of the, of the steering wheel. And of course they rotate, so not all three are operating at the same time or, or it would get overwhelming. And so it's good to douse and find out, you know, is the rotation every three months or once a year or, you know, how do, how do they do the changing of the guard or who's in charge? Also, um, the, the souls that inhabit people, I mean, it can only be one soul, it can be multiple souls. But if it's multiple souls, the interesting thing is that they can be from various sources. And what do I mean by that? They can be from very many different planetary beings. And so she's created a list of the different types of planetary beings that can inhabit you at any one particular time. So um, there, you, there's a number of soul origins can be... So I, I think I've unmuted everybody, so whoever's got the dogs, if you yourself again the little darling is sorry that's all right I, I, I was the one that unmuted you so obviously your dog has got something to say about multiple souls so soul origins there's earthlings which are normal uh, they like to form families and raise children there's moonlets or those from the moon they're emotional sensitive material intuitive and childlike there's the wanderer from other stars and service to this planet. There's extraterrestrial, newly arrived on this planet. There's interdimensional beings from another dimension. There's angelic beings, occasional angels incarnated into a human body. There's black, black hole guardians. They guard the entrance to a black hole responsible and they like speed. There's rainbow spirits are bohemian. They use color to heal and they feel rootless. There's a cometoid being, like speed and fierce collision. There's a Martian type being who literally is from the planet Mars. There's a Vesuvium, literally from the planet Venus. There's a Maldekian, 
that is sad, disposed, loves or hates technology, especially atomic technology. There's solar beings that are confident, courageous, loyal, and energetic. There's Mercurian uh, beings that are communicative, intellectually uh, intellectual and changeable. There's Vesuvians who are loving, sensual, partners, uh, oriented, and graceful. There's Martian active, which are more assertive, uh, like a challenge uh, initiator. And there's Jupiterian, opt who are optimistic, expansive, happy-go-lucky. There's Centurion, which are workaholic, disciplined, moralistic issues of financial security. There's Chiron, which are wounded healers, sufferers, and visionaries. And there's Uranians, which are humanitarian, nonconformists, and rebels. And there's uh, Neptunian dreamers, spiritual, musical, intuitive, and addictive. And last but not least, there's Plutonian, which are intense, powerful, psychological, and transformers. So I put all these on a chart. So not only do you have the soul origin of multiple beings that could be inhabiting one, your body or a client's body, there's then there's the dimensionality. So this is sort of like the gradation of where they are in the dimensional schemes of things. So from the third to fifth dimensional being would be a very materialistic oriented or more grounded or more like an earthling. And the sixth to eighth dimensional being is more half material and half spiritual. And a ninth to 11th dimensional being is a guru in training. And a 12th to 15th dimensional being is a guru, a master, or a spiritual teacher. And the 16th to the 18th is an avatar. So any one of those types of beings can be inhabiting you at any one time, one being predominant at any one uh, time, or could be giving over the driver's seat, so to speak, periodically to another soul. So I've been working with a client who's been... been had a lot of traumatic experience in her life. She just phoned before this and was really quite disturbed, disturbed because I had doused uh, the last session and had found that there was four uh, souls inhabiting her, and one of which was not beneficial. So I asked if we needed to know anything uh, further and whether it was a, appropriate. First of all, first question was, was the soul beneficial? And the answer, and in harmony with the others, the answer was no. Secondly, uh, do we have permission, or is the soul ready to to leave the body? And the answer was yes. The third question was, was there any other information that we needed in order to do this? And the answer was no, that wasn't necessary to do that. And so that we went, um, on with uh, clearing her, uh, that soul. And it, w it readily went on to another dimension to include its soul growth. Because every dimension, from whatever our point of view, good, bad, or ugly, it's just a personal perspective how we judge that soul. But they're all in, on an evolutionary path of consciousness. So helping that soul that's not happy being incarnate in a body that they feel is not serving their soul growth they're usually very, um, they're usually quite willing to move on in their soul growth to inhabit another dimension or another body or even to return uh, to the other side and to, to incarnate in their own body. So, so we were able to have this soul um, move on and it was done with ease and grace. And then um, she phoned me today and she's always stood perturbed because she felt really uncomfortable having three souls in her body. So I doused again and found that all three souls were cohabiting quite well. They were all beneficial and they were all supporting each other. And I said, well, look at it this way, rather than who are they and why don't you come to the realization that you have three soul entities from different planes and dimensions that are trying to experience or want to experience the trauma that you have had in your life in order for their own soul growth. And isn't it better to have three souls working on this because it's such an in intense experience you've created for your soul growth than just you on your own? And I said, the other thing that you can do is if you get overwhelmed or frightened, there's a technique in which you can call one soul right here, right now, 
and that um, means that all the souls, whatever dimension they are on, or wherever they are, need to come back to this plane, to the dimension that you're calling from, in order to deal with whatever it is that you want to resolve in that moment. It could be fear, it could be overwhelm, it could be an important decision you need to make, it could be feeling that you're under threat or exhausted, and you just need everybody, all of the multidimensional aspects of yourself to show up to get the situation dealt with. So that's what I'm learning about. It's a very fascinating new world. It's um, another way of looking at it from a positive way rather than from a, a negative way. Oh, this person has discarnate beings in them. I'm not saying that there aren't discarnate beings and I'm not saying that there aren't negative entities. There are because I help people, you know, who are possessed deal with that as well. But to know that all of this is the drama that we've created for ourselves, for our own soul growth, and not to get attached to the fact that somebody is doing something to us. We're doing it to ourselves, and it's a choice that we've made, and we can make another choice. So if we've had enough of all this, and we don't like what's showing up in our life, we have the divine right to choose something different. That's part of waking up and knowing that we are in control of our own destiny. So hopefully that was a good introduction, and I open it up to any questions or comments that anybody might have with regard to that. So if you muted yourself, you can unmute yourself and comment or ask any questions. Any questions or comments? All you have to do is unmute yourself. Tony, do you have any questions? No, mate, not in the moment. No, not in the moment? Okay. How about you, Alicia? Do you have any moment? Any questions? Well, this is fairly new to me, but how do you know if you have these entities? Oh, you just douse. Do you know how to douse? You mean with a pendulum? Yeah, absolutely. Yes or no, or body swaying, or muscle testing, whatever works for you. And what do you do if you find out you do? <laughs> what do you find out what you do? Well, the, the second thing is, well, I would talk to me if you did, and then I can help you. But basically, you want, I just want to ask, is are, are they beneficial or non-beneficial? Um, you should do it also, you know, with what I call your light team or your spirit guides or those that are assisting you. You want to make sure everybody is on the same you know, on the same team, and they're all getting along because there can be pranksters and jokesters who are a little bit of a troublemaker, right? Like the the class person who acts up, you know, in the school in the back of the room. You don't want to be getting any guidance from that type of person. So it's the same thing with your any souls that are inhabiting your being. You want them to be beneficial. They want you want them to be able to be contributing to your growth. And if they're on your light team, in other, in other words, they're on the other dimensions helping you, not in your body, um, you want to make sure that they're the type of beings that have had the experience of being on the earth, incarnating, and have had the experience of ascension. Because we're in the midst of that whole planetary transformation that's going on now. So it would be good to be assisted by those that have had that experience rather than, say, an angel that's never incarnated into a human body, they'll have a point of view that may be very useful, but if they haven't had the experience of being in a human body, then their guidance may not be as helpful for us as earthbound spirits. Okay. So what do you think of that? Um, well, that's, that's a whole new realm. A whole new world out there. Yeah. <laughs> Where do these entities come from? Or what are they doing out there? Well, that's a good question. Well, those entities out there are, um, they come from a multi-dimension. So let's put it this way. There's, you know, at this change, time of change and transformation on the planet, as we're going through this rapid growth, many, many interdimensional beings want to experience this, you know, once in a, th a 36,000, uh, sorry, once in a 64,000 year cycle, right? This turn, this you know, turning of the ages, or however you want to call it, um, happens very rarely. So, 
many entities want to incarnate and have that experience uh, of what we're going through. And, um, but some of them are not ready to have a body yet. Some of them are discarnate. They haven't sort of lined up for their body or they're not uh, ready for a body or whatever. So they're just still dis discarnate. They don't have a body. So they're looking for an opportunity of somebody who has the same frequency as them who um, they can inhabit the body to have that, that sense of physicality. So that's what a discarnate being is, inhabiting another person's body. And of course, that can be very, very disruptive to us, So, or those that have that experience. So part of the work that I do is to teach people to take back their personal power and to stand in the truth, which is to know, is to be able to be strong enough to exclude any uh, beings that are inhabiting their body that are non-beneficial and to be able to know uh, when they're, uh, you know, when they're under attack or when they're, um, somebody's trying to intrude into their field or, or mess with them. And this is particularly important for empath, empaths because empaths feel far more than most people. They're open to other energy around them and therefore there's a more sympathetic resonance that goes out that entities get attracted to. Oh, there's somebody who would understand me. Let me go to that person and maybe they can help me or maybe I can learn or experience in their energy field. So that's why it's really important to learn how to take back your power and stand in your truth. One of the ways to do that is that I've created is the deep pendulum clearing processes uh, strengthen your energy field over a 21 day period. All right, any further comments on that or questions? Roy? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm waiting for you if you want. Well, supposing, well, my mother just died a few years ago. Would she be one of those people in, in that room? Do you want me to find out? Okay. All right. So let me ask you. Okay, so is your mother. Uh, on your light team? And the answer is yes. Okay. Oh, All right. So, yeah, so she, does your mother have things that she wants to communicate with you? Yes. So, you know, there, there's a number of ways that you could do that. So, you know, would it be beneficial for you to work with somebody who, like a medium, who can be a go between you and your mother? It's, in this case, I'm getting it's not necessary. You know, like it's not overwhelming what she has to say to you, or it's like, oh my, my God, I forgot to tell her whatever before I passed on. It's more that she has a love and compassion for you, and wants to help you on the on your path. But you could ask a medium if you know if there's anything that she wants to communicate with you. But I'm not getting that that's a really a strong need for her or for you. Okay, and um. A little while ago, I, I kind of got involved, not really involved, but I was talking to a lot of people that were very religious. And, you know, I've done Reiki for years and, you know, done all kinds of different things. And they told me that, you know, playing with mediums and um, Reiki and even um, Tai Chi is uh, a really, really bad thing. You're you're inviting the, um, I don't know, the evil spirits. And, you know, I just kind of left them, that, them behind because I, I didn't understand. Was, was that just a fear? What, what, what are they doing? Are they just... Well, we get, all of us get to create the world we live in with every thought, word, deed, and action. So if you have those fundamental Christian beliefs, you actually create that world to live in, and, and that actually happens. So. Uh -huh. If you believe that there's hell and hellfire and brimstone, then you're going to experience hellfire and brimstone when you pass over to the other side until you realize that you've created it all. Once you realize that you've created it in your mind's eye, then you can let it go. So the really important thing is to, on the soul level, what 
are you, how are you being guided? What, what are you, when you're in the still quiet inside yourself, what are the messages that you're receiving from source or God consciousness directly to you? Not what humans believe you should believe in or, you know, another liturgy or belief system or you need to believe this or whatever. Um, most of that is really fear-based and a desire for a finding a group that uh, makes you feel secure because you all have the same belief, whether it's right or wrong. It's much more difficult, as you know, to get your own guidance and, you know, go to your own drum beat than the, rather than the drum beat of a group. You know, it's more of a challenge because you have to deal with, did I get that right? Am I making the right decision? Um, whereas if you were in the group, the decisions would be made for you. So the fact that you were able to feel okay about walking away from that I think is really positive. It means that you, that's not the way you choose to learn anymore by being part of a group and trying to fit in. Yeah, I would never fit into that kind of group. <laughs> no, neither would I. And in fact, if you're an empath, um, then you're not here to fit in anyway. You're here as a planetary change agent and your job is not to fit in. And, and for a lot of people, that's very difficult to come to that realization because our culture says you need to fit in or you get the belief that you need to feel in, fit in in order to succeed or be rich or accomplish things or be noted or whatever. But in your, in our case, or in the case of impact, that's not the situation at all. We're here not to fit in. We have a different job to do. That makes sense. Yeah, that's why I work with empaths, helping them understand, you know, what are their divine gifts? Why did they incarnate? What are their unique gifts to deliver to the world? Because the world's waiting for them. And the more people that can know what their gifts are and deliver them, the further we're going to be along in creating a new way of showing up on planet Earth rather than the status quo, which is really rooted in fear, doubt, shame, guilt, you know, might, and overwrite, and all the rest of that, right? Yeah. So those questions that you have and those insights are very valuable. So keep it up. Okay. <laughs> the dogs will probably start barking and agree with you. Yes. <laughs> All right. We got a call here. Hello, this is Tyson with the Healing Hour. Um, this is Valerie. This is Valerie, the one and only Valerie. Yes, the one and only. And you know I'm not online. You're not online. No, I can't find any link. I can't find anything. Well, it's a Zoom link. Do you just come on to Zoom? It's 493. Four. Hold on. Yeah, can you turn that, that silly guy who sounds like me off in the background? It's you, but I it's know. an old one. 493. Yeah, dash 144. Dash one nine six. One nine six. So what do I do? You just click the link on Zoom, right? It'll be www whatever the Zoom. Oh is. Lord, is there a Zoom link somewhere? Yeah, it'll be wherever you, you know. If you go over to the Dowsing and Energy Healing Close Facebook group, but I've been locked out, okay, so I can't. There's a Zoom one, but it's an old recording. There's a Zoom. Every one of the recordings will have it where the description above the recording. Click that link and you'll join us. Hold on. Okay. All righty. Can I just stay on the call because I don't know. You don't know nothing. Okay. Yeah, you can stay on the call this way, but that just means nobody. Well, somebody else can still phone. I may kick you off if somebody else phones. Okay. Well, so, I'm trying to figure out how to, call, to go on Zoom. I, I don't know where it is. Right. Well, if you go to the Dowsing and Energy Healing Close Facebook group, you'll see on the right-hand side it says... Um, what does it say? It says workshops, right? Um, okay, and then you just click that link. Okay, so Trudy's saying she can't uh, unmute herself. Okay, let me just see here. All right, so see what you can do here. In the meantime, stay on here yeah. as you go and try and figure that out. Let me just see if I can yes, sir. get this other lady on. Trudy, Trudy, where are you, Trudy? Okay, so let's see here. From Trudy, I can't unmute myself. Okay, so. 
Um, so Trudy, if you can hear me, I can't even find where you are uh, to unmute you. Uh, it should be you should be able to mute yourself on the on the bottom left hand corner here, but you're not even showing up on the panel here. So um, maybe come back, maybe go out, Trudy, and come back in. Maybe that would help. All right. So Tony, uh, any comments, questions, concerns, feedback? Yeah, not really at the moment, mate. Okay, no, that's fine. All right, so the other book that I'm reading, which is fascinating, which is somewhat associated to this, is um, has to do, his name is Robert Schwartz, and it's called Your Soul's Gift, and the other one he's talking about is Your Soul's Purpose. And what he's describing is the process before you incarnate, that your soul group makes a decision about who's going to play what role in order to, in this lifetime to have that experience, including the most horrific things that you can ever imagine. So from our perspective, it looks like, it looks absolutely horrific, right? About what's happening to somebody. But on the soul level, it could be exactly what they chose to happen including murder, mayhem, you know, school shootings and all the rest. Now, I'm not saying this is a way to justify everything that's happening on the planet. You know, I'm all for a peaceful, more loving, benevolent planet uh, that we don't need to have those violent experiences or if other beings in their soul growth need to have a violent experience, maybe they can go to some other planet to have that experience. So I'm not advocating that this is an excuse all to get everybody off the hook, but it is an interesting way to look at it um, in the sense of when I work with clients about um, their core fractures or their toxic emotions, which are really um, like near-death experiences or traumatic events that could come from near-death, rape, or uh, some significant happening like that in their life that's trauma-induced, that it's really hard for the person that this happens to to get over it, to get around it or get over it or work through it. So um, doing removing toxic emotions is really looking at what is the most dramatic experience that you've had. Was it with your mother or was it with your father or was it with God or was it with uh, somebody who is in a powerful position like a teacher or or coach or whatever, that uh, you feel disrupted what it was that you wanted to get that you didn't get. And so I take them through a whole process to regain that ability to realize that on the soul level, they created this circumstances and that other person is playing a significant role for them to realize what they want from somebody else is impossible to get from that person that they could only get what they want from inside of themselves. And that's really difficult for a lot of people to come to that understanding. So if you think about it and what I was just talking about on the soul level, that you have this traumatic experience, and I know I've had quite a few traumatic experiences in my life, then what is it that I, why did I create that? Or, or what what on the soul level did my soul group, what were they trying to accomplish by having that experience? And if you can tap into that and get the positive aspects of what that possibly could be, of why you chose that, then it will take the pressure off the fact that you maybe got it wrong or, oh, why, you know, or that whole thing, I fall upon the thorns of life, I bleed, that whole Wordsworth, you know, so I'm suffering for me or, why does God allow this to happen? I'm a good person. Or, you know, why did that person die and this other person didn't? You know, if this is all part of what we chose, it, then it has a whole different perspective in which we can look at things free of judgment from our human mind. Consciousness uh, is harder to judge because we don't know uh, what it is for the soul level unless we can tap into that level. So hopefully that made some clarity for people. And if there's any questions about that, I'm open and willing 
uh, with regard to that. I have a I have a story from when I was young. Yeah, I was always fearful of nuclear weapons and a nuclear war. Uh huh. <laughs> and then when I when I took up hypnosis, um, the guy who was training us said I needed some therapy, so I went to see him, and nothing worked. And he didn't know that it was about nuclear weapons, and neither did I at the time. Um, anyway, I said to him, I think we've got to do a, a regression. Mm -hmm. so we went through a regression, and it turned out that I was um, an Aboriginal, mm -hmm. standing in the middle of nowhere. Um, I was just looking over the hills. And then it was like I knew I was me but also knew as this aboriginal mm -hmm. and then there was a bright light and he's asking me what's going on and like i knew that was a nuclear weapon going off but the aboriginal just just experienced it and then um, yes since then i know that i've not got to go through that again so it's never been an issue since interesting yeah, I got that it even may go back even further than that, and you may have had, you know, been on another planet that actually went through a nuclear holocaust as well. And then, you know, I don't know if that's true. I'm just going to doubt and see if it happens to be, right? And most likely it is. So then the question is, not that we need to solve this because it's not bothering you anymore, is then why, why is it a re, you know, if that, what's interesting that if that were the case and then it happened as an aboriginal, then it's happened in more than one dimension and more than one incarnation uh, for you to have this experience in order to release yourself from it. So then, and then the interesting thing is why the nuclear explosion? Is it a precursor or warning or whatever? Do you have any insight on and why it, that might be the situation? No, I was, I was just always afraid of nuclear weapons. I don't know where it came from. Yeah. But it ties in with some other stuff. Because yeah. when I was about three, I told my mum, and I remember telling her, that I was reincarnated from a bird. And I said, next time I'm going to come back as a bird again. And I also, I've always thought that I should belong in Australia. Uh -huh. And it's, it's sort of tied into the Australia Part. The experience, yeah. Yeah, and then the bird, um, as soon as I could, I took up hang gliding. So did you say beard? What did you say? What was the, I didn't. Beard. A falcon, the bird. Oh, 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 a bird, a falcon. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, the falcon is very much connected to Egypt too, right? Yeah and the falcon you know of wisdom and communication and also one of the deities or gods and there was a belief that 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 while they depicted them you know in hieroglyphics as you know half human half animal that there is a belief or understanding that at one time there was such things that were half human and half animal and that um that maybe you know that hawk-like quality or that falcon quality that oversight or long version vision you know might be part of the qualities that you're bringing through in this lifetime yeah i love birds and i love flying fascinating fascinating well it's exciting that you you know you have the sensitivity to remember past lives to have that aha experience to be able to free yourself from trauma that otherwise would burden you and also to realize uh, that intimate connection that you can have with the bird kingdom and that um you know that there are, you know one of the things you can google is the bird tribe about you know the origins of the bird tribe and what did they bring to planet earth as one of the multiple species that has inhabited this planet you know if way beyond the, the history that we're given this planet has been inhabited by many many races some of which have actually ascended off this planet right so one of them was the bird tribe which were part of our teachers and uh, it would be interesting it might be interesting for you i don't know if it would be to maybe google that and learn a bit more about it 
yeah, I'll look into it. Right. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's really quite interesting. So, Trudy, are you back? Can you unmute yourself? Can you ask a question? Can you say hello? Or have you been silenced permanently from ever talking? Uh, I cannot unmute myself today. Okay. Strange. Okay. So, I'm just going to see if I can do something for that on my side of the of the fence. So, Valerie, you got any questions? Uh, not at the moment. No. I still have figured out. Oh. Well, there you are. I, I think I ended the recording for a second there, but we're back trying to figure out how we can get, maybe get Trudy on board here. So let me just see here. Uh, I don't even see Trudy in the list of panelists. So anyway, I don't know. So Trudy, I've given up. I don't know how to unmute you because I can't find you. You've disappeared into the void. So, um, but you could type, seeing as you can type in, why don't you, uh, why don't you ask a question by typing in? So uh, I just said a whole bunch of stuff about multiple souls and also uh, your whole um, agreements that you made with your, your, your um, soulmate, so to speak, on the other dimension. So it's interesting because I've been led to, when I do the clearing more and more, when I clear the matriarchal and patriarchal lineages, I'm saying the family of origin, the soul family, which we were talking about, because they have their agenda about what we should be doing on their behalf in this incarnation. And then I've added the star nations as well, because they have their agenda about what they, you know, why we should incarnate on planet Earth or if we're from Venus. What are we supposed to, what sort of knowledge are we supposed to be bringing back to Venus or are we an ambassador from Venus or, you know, what is our relationship to Venus or, and is there an, any soul agreements that we've made with regard to um, this incarnation? And so, yeah, so that's, I find really fascinating. It's opening up many, many uh, different doors. I've also had a conversation with a, a recent uh, client who from 19, 2016, who said that uh, out of the blue, uh, she, uh, she has a dance studio, and out of the blue, she was contacted by a Chinese lady who had just been murdered and was on the other side, and said the police are not uh, really being effective in, in determining who murdered me. And so she's had this conversation with this person, and the synchronicity that has been set up with this other person on the other side to discover and to reveal about how her she was murdered and to bring her murderer to justice has been really, really fascinating. And as she's opened this door, or as this being on the other side helped open the door, she now can do soul readings. She can, you can go to her and she can do a reading about what it is on the soul level that you chose to do in this incarnation, which for many people can be quite a relief to understand why they've created something that's so difficult or say why abundance doesn't flow in their lives or why they are continually sick or, or whatever. And sometimes by knowing that and understanding that, that you made this choice, you can then make another choice and change it. And that sounds pretty exciting to me. So what do people think about that? Interesting. Yeah, certainly not boring, right? No. And here you thought you had only yourself to think about, and now you got all this other stuff here. You're on an assignment, Valerie. I know that. I don't know what it is. Maybe you should have her on your call. <laughs> yeah, I, I could have her on my call. That's a great idea. I need to do an interview with her and have her on my call. So upcoming, uh, talking about calls, I've been working with a group in Uganda uh, putting some funding together to get them incorporated as a non-governmental organization, hopefully so that they can uh, have an association and funding by matching them with a Canadian non-governmental organization and an American one as well, which then opens up possibility of funding from international development community like Canadian International Development Agency. And I used to work in that whole sort of or, uh, area, and I had interns, young recent graduates all over the 
in the developing world uh, working on environmental projects. So it's something dear to my heart, although I don't have the contacts that I had before, but I'm trying to get the funding together. I'm trying to raise $500 to, to help them become incorporated so we can do the next step. Anyway, I just funded them some money so that I can interview them on Zoom and then put it onto the wellness show so people understand what it is they're doing at the rural level. They're doing a whole education program around poverty alleviation, dealing with AIDS education. They were hoping to do um, to uh, be able to do some wells, bringing uh, quality water for food uh, for you know crops and uh, for irrigation for crops and for drinking water and uh, hopefully an orphanage. So it's a huge project that I got myself involved in and I'm hoping other people will want to join and realize that, you know, by helping others, they help themselves. So that's a big project coming up and I'm looking forward to that interview. But Valerie, I'll keep it in mind. I'll talk to my previous client and see if she wants to come on and, and talk about what sort of experiences she's having. And I know she would love to help other people and wants to do that, you know, offer that service uh, for yeah, people. You can, can put you on your list. Okay. So I will do that and reach out to her and make that happen. Well, we've got a few more minutes. we got four more minutes to the top of the hour. I don't know if Trudy... As a, I have experienced this for myself when something would not make me say things I didn't mean. Do does that mean you can't say anything at the moment? Uh, are you trapped in your body without being able to uh, say anything? I know I was threatened when I was in India, or it was, a, it was a, an attempt at possession that was occurring, and I was told that if I didn't behave myself, if I didn't conform, that I would die in India, uh, and that I'd get violently ill, I'd die in India, and I'd incarnate uh, as paraplegic. I'd need one person to move each arm and one person to move a leg in order to, to give me flexibility to keep me alive, and that I wouldn't be able to speak. So not being able to speak is really quite interesting dilemma to imagine yourself in that predicament about what can you do if you can't speak? How do you communicate? I mean, there's always telepathy, but that means there needs to be somebody tel telepathic on the other end, right? Uh, and that's an another thing around that is that as my sister passed over, not being able to communicate with her because she wasn't able to talk, it makes it really clear to me that with your loved ones, it's really important to come up with a communication method with them uh, before that were to happen. So, for example, you know, a, a squeeze of a hand, one squeeze is yes, uh, two squeezes is no, or one blink is yes, two blinks is no. To have that ability to talk with a person who can't uh, write and they can't speak, because I know for my sister it was very scary. I, d I knew that she was allergic to penicillin, and I wasn't sure that the derivative that they were giving her or the substitute for penicillin was having an adverse effect on her and she couldn't speak and I couldn't communicate with her and uh, and all I tried to make that understood uh, you know about squeezing hands and everything it was next to impossible so I really encourage you with your loved ones is to um, is to figure that out ahead of time right about how you want to do that I think it's really really important so I know that's a a strange thing to say in the midst of this uh, healing hour, but I think it's important. Have you ever thought of that, Valerie? Um, what is that? Have you ever thought about the whole thing about a loved one being, as they pass over, not being able to communicate and wishing that? Um, not really. The, uh, tell you the truth, that is something, you know, uh, in the culture, when you start doing that, it's as if you're going to go to hell. But since my husband passed away, I've been really curious. <laughs> I've been extremely curious about that. Right. So did you have a way to communicate with your husband as he died? Were you able to... Uh, uh, well, it was sudden. Yeah, it was sudden. So, yeah. So there, you, there was... But I think, I think I do. Yeah, great. 
but there was it's not, not, not I'm not sure if yeah. I, you know, if, 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 if it's my imagination, but I think I do. Oh, let me just ask if it's your imagination. You want me to do that? Yes. All right. Well, so is it your imagination? No, it's not your imagination. It may be. So if you were to say, I uh, could you make uh, some, could you give me some sign to I, so I know that it's not my imagination? Tell them that. Give me okay, some give sign. Some sign that I know it's not my imagination. Right. Okay. That's what I want you to do over the next week and wait for that yeah. answer. And then get back to me. Phone me on the healing hour and tell me what you found out. Talking to me. Yeah, and uh, why not? Why wouldn't he want to talk to you? So, yeah. Because I sit down, <laughs> I used to sit and talk to him. Yeah. And once in a while, I think I hear him talking to me. <laughs> but I don't tell anybody, and I think I'm cookie. Well, you're telling me, and I don't think you're cookie. I think that's great. So, so ask, and then so you can get a confirmation that it is real, and then you can trust it more. And it will help you with your guidance as well. You know, the more you trust yeah. your guidance, the more you trust your ability to commu you? communicate with somebody else on the other side, the better you're going to feel. Tired? Oh. All right, so we're going to call this a wrap. Thanks for showing up. This is Tyson Benningham. This was the Healing Hour. Hopefully we'll be back on Facebook. Facebook will hopefully won't be locking me out next week. So we'll be back same time, same place next week. And uh, looking forward to... Um, um, oh, just a minute here. Crudy says, I've come across a dog that was friendly at one house. Another house started biting. Interesting. Okay, well, then I would clear the house where it was biting. There's something scaring the dog out of their house. There's something in the energy field that is disturbing that dog. Okay? That dog is hypersensitive not only to humans, to, but to where it is. All right. This is a wrap. This is Tyson Bannigan. This, the energy detective. This was the Healing Hour. We'll be back same time, same place next Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. Until then, be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Bye for now. The Healing Hour. Brought to you every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. During the show, you can phone in toll-free in North America, 1-866-369-7464 or 1-866-1000. The Healing Hour is live on Facebook, hosted by the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy and sponsored by the Facebook page, The Healing Arts Academy. Produced by The Wellness Show, and until next Tuesday, same time, same place, be healthy, wealthy and wise.